the R1 Works Digital 3 ESC and the Castle 1412 6400 KV motor is pretty much the most lethal combination that we have ever seen in NPRC. Future is so bright on what we are going to see down the road. That's why I have to have these sunglasses on. But we're talking about right here, right now. What we're going to do is I'm going to take you through tuning methods that I have been using, little bits and pieces from many of the top pros out there that I have basically put to use and put together numbers like this right here so I think that means that I can pretty much help you go faster today so I am Chad this is the dorky and 40 RC channel we are gonna make you faster today let's go first of all guys things you can see look a little bit different here and they are getting even better thanks to all of you who donate to the channel and everything else we've been able to make some channel upgrades I've got my computer screens in front of me all this bench here we've got a new boom arm for the mic that should not be making any noise right now we do have a new mic on the way we've got camera different camera mounts all that kind of stuff still a work in progress on everything but everything of course I think is way better already than it was got a lot more room to do good stuff for you guys starting with this video right here so the goal of this video guys is to provide you with any and all information that I can that I've learned through other people none of this is original ideas Mark Vine, Jeff Zuccarell, Jay Fab, Stu Mack, just to name a few. If I missed anybody out there that has been reaching out and helped me, I am deeply apologize. You can ask anybody for their tune. They can give you the exact tune out of their car, but guess what? It's not gonna work. You gotta figure out how to do this stuff for yourself. I'm gonna show you how I took all of these little bits and pieces and put them together on the track and gave myself the results that I got. We've got the five star breakout chassis here. This is probably the last time you're gonna see it. The new one is back there in that box right there. Give you guys a little still frame here. Can you see where that box is from? You're gonna find out pretty soon and you are gonna love it. So we'll go over all the settings in the R1 ESC, some chassis tuning, gearing, stuff in the San Juan M17. Yes, I'm sorry. You are still going to need the M17. In my last video, I said that the R1 definitely, I think, took a little bit away of the tuning from the radio, but from what I have seen and what I have learned from others, the radio tuning now is just as important, especially if you wanna simplify things a little bit more for yourself. So that is one thing to consider. We've got a tablet here, we've got another tablet, we've got all kinds of stuff going on, so let's get to it right now. All right guys, so the first thing we should probably talk about is gearing. So right off the bat, I'm running 8129. I understand that five millimeter pinions are expensive, they're hard to come by and everything else, but you do wanna get yourself a collection of a couple around that range. If we go in and take a look at the app that I am using to calculate everything, Thing. I'm using the simple RC gear calc app right here. So it's the one with the little smiley face if you're looking on the app store or whatever. And if we look at my actual ratio and everything here, you can see that at 81.29, my final drive is at 7.26 right now. That's what I've been doing to get the fast runs that I've got. So the exact same gearing that I was running when I ran my 173, my 185, my 181, everything else like that. Now, if you cannot get that exact gearing, I have heard and I've seen other people around me test that anything close to that will actually work. Now this app is pretty handy. So let's go in and let's say that you have a 31 pinion, you don't have a 29. So an 8731 would get you close to that final drive. So of course we can go the other way too with this gearing, if this is what you got. If we take a look, we can go to a 26 pinion and a 72 spur and still get close to that final drive. Some people say that 7.5 is the, ma the magic number, but I think the consensus, at least right now for regular racers and the people that are going really fast and based off of my own results, is that somewhere around that 7.2 to 7.3 final drive is where you want to be for maximum performance now as you increase things whether it be timing or anything else like that and we start looking at our actual data then you might want to actually make some gear changes and everything to go along with that so that's where you want to start look at your logs don't worry about adding any timing or anything like that at all play around with some of the basic esc settings play around with some of the basic radio settings, take a look at your data logs and see where you are at. 
you should be somewhere around 55 to 60,000 RPMs, maybe a little bit lower with no timing at all. I mean, people are ripping off two, two, one, no problem at all with no timing on this. You gotta remember, most people are getting between, I think 12 and about 13 degrees of timing built into the castle based off of like motorizer results. So, you know, it's kind of a silicone lottery on how much timing you get in the can, but it's okay because it's pretty insignificant, but it's there and it's something definitely to think about. So when we talk about logs, like what should your log look like ultimately when you're tuning? Well, if you look inside of the actual R1 tune and you look at the log, it's gonna look something like this. And this big top line that you see here is the amp pool and it's pretty high. I've always wondered if my current sensor is off a little bit, but what we're actually looking at here is we're looking at a nice steady buildup and then it just holds almost the entire time to the end of the run. So we, it doesn't fall off a cliff at all. So this pink line is my RPMs that are building. We've got the throttle here going to 100% and then going to the end of the hit. We've got the battery coming down here and everything else like that. You can see on this hit here that we made 60,000 RPMs, 60,650, a voltage drop of 6.3. So this is a run that I really threw a lot of timing at it. And it wasn't one of my best runs, but it was one of the ones that I captured that just kind of shows you what you want your log to look like. Now, if you've got all kinds of little stair steps and stuff going on up here in your RPMs or in your amps, that means that you're slipping in certain spots and you're gonna have to adjust your tune to figure that out, whether it be less timing, delaying timing, increasing the amount of time that it takes for timing to come in, all kinds of little tricks of the trade that we will talk about right here on this video. So let's get into this R1 ESC. That should be a good basis right there to start with. Actually, we should probably look at the M17 first. So let's do that. We'll power on the mighty powerful M17. Gotta love the Sanwa, just gotta love this thing, so. Get this in the frame here. Okay, now here we are with the Sanwa M17. So if you haven't seen and the, how to use a Sanwa M17, I've got plenty of videos here at on a channel. One where I went deep, deep, deep into it. Mark Vine's got one on Desert Hobbies. Most of that stuff applies. It just teaches you how to actually use the radio, what some of the features do and everything else. We'll go over some of those briefly here in the radio. So I've got a custom menu set up on mine and you can see like right off the bat here what some of my stuff is and nothing too crazy. Actually, we need to switch models here because that was my actual buggy. So we'll go into model, model select, breakout, done. Okay, so what we're gonna do is go into settings and we'll go into the actual throttle settings. So in the, th the throttle settings here, you can see that I'm running my dual rate at 100%. Now, if you want the dual rate at 100% is pretty much what you want to run all the time, but there is a trick. If you are not, listen to this next step real quick and we'll talk about the dual rate and the EPA. So what do you wanna do is, Ultimately on your speed, I'm running, you can see on this last run here, I ran a minus 96 ramp. And the minus 96 ramp basically when it comes to Sanwa, I will show you the graph here, how long it takes from when you pull the trigger to go from zero to 100. So if I pull the trigger, you can see how it ramps in and how long it actually takes. It's actually jumping over 20 real quick and then ramping to 100 at a rate of 96. And that rate again is based off of these times. Now, ultimately, some of the fastest people are able to throw down the minus 95 ramp. Now, the minus 95 ramp is more aggressive. It's 0.2 seconds faster to get you there to 100% throttle. So when you add that 0.2 seconds from the Sanwa into everything else that we're gonna be doing, you can imagine how much power that 
is. But ultimately, if your car can take it, you want to do it. I, right now, have just been able to do the minus 96. I can't do the minus 95. It's too fast, the car breaks loose, and everything else. But if you have a super solid chassis, and you're confident in your build, and you just wanna go for it and not blow your, and hope that you don't blow your tires off, go for it. So just go ahead and set that forward speed to minus 95. All right, so you guys ready for that little pro tip here? So sometimes what you're gonna wanna do is maybe you wanna try that 95 ramp and see if you can actually get it there. But what you can do is we can kind of cheat that a little bit. And how we do that is we go down here to the base setting and we take our EPA and we turn it from 100 up to like 110. So we still have our actual dual rate um, set to 100 on here so we're still going 100 percent throttle but we're what we're doing actually is we are increasing that resolution by stretching that out a little bit so instead of it being at such an aggressive 0.2 second of a difference maybe now it's like 0.25 or 0.3 by just increasing that so your esc is still going to see 100 percent throttle but you're actually gonna have 110, 111, 115, wherever you set it at, points of a throttle pull. So it's another little pro tip to just think about. Again, start with the minus 96 or the 95 if you really think that it can handle it. But if you want it, if you're stuck in between and you really wanna work that 95 and work your way down, pump up that EPA and get it back down to like 100 and see what happens, go for it. Now your point, of course, we all know is how far it's gonna jump over from here before it ramps in the power. And this is just talking about the sand wall. There's other things in the ESC that we can do to control that point, but we are not gonna be doing any of that stuff right now at this point in the video. We're talking about just like my last tune that I put in to go 181. So it was a minus 96 ramp and a point of 10. Where the pros and stuff are going is they're using um, either a 96, a 95, and of course, they're gonna run their point up as high as they can. So 12, 15, even 20. So as much as your car can take, that's what you're gonna do. Now, right now in this tune, I am not doing any curves at all, but that is a key to unlocking even more power out of this setup. So half the drivers, are doing things. So a lot of the drivers out there are using custom P curves. You can either build those in the radio, in the ESC, or a combination of both. And one way is really not better than the other, at least not that I have found out. I think it's a little bit easier to do in the San Juan, even though in the ESC you do get more granular control. Using the touch screen is a little difficult, especially when you got like prep on your hands and all this kind of crazy stuff tried using like the Bluetooth pencil and all that stuff for the iPad. And uh, you know, it's a little bit rough. So the radio is nice because you can just kind of dial it in and all that kind of stuff. And then you can kind of set and forget your actual ESC settings and make things a little bit easier on yourself. Take a little, take a few things out of the equation per se. So when we talk about actual custom P curves, again, this is not where you want to be right now, but this is where you want so we access the custom P curve here by just going over to this exponent and changing it to curve. And what it's gonna do is it's gonna bring up like a nine point type of curve that you can adjust the numbers on. And basically you can see what we got going on here. We've got kind of like a steep little incline and then it kind of levels off a little bit and then it kind of just goes all the way up to 100%. So you can build this P curve however you want to do it. The thing is, again, is that this is gonna be for people that A, know what they're doing and what this does. I could explain it to you a thousand times, but you're gonna have to watch this video over and over again. So make sure you do share it. And if you like this video and what we're doing, make sure you give it a like and a comment and help us promote this to other people. Share it to all of your friends, all that kind of stuff. If you appreciate what we've done here, we also have Amazon affiliate links down below that you can make purchases off of Amazon and give a little commission to the channel to help support 
pick up some gear here and there is that PayPal link for the donations. So let's take a look here at what we're trying to do. So most of your throttle curves, of course, are just like a straight linear line, you know, where you're at zero and you're at 100. So what the actual custom P curve, you want it to look like in a way is you want it to basically start kind of level off and then go up from there to 100. It's pretty much the same thing that Jeff Zuccarell has been teaching forever. This came out last year when we didn't have these kind of ESCs and stuff. He did a great video on it, so I take no credit in this at all. Simply just trying to explain this to you guys again so you have an idea of how many tools are at your disposal. Again, I am not using the custom P-curve. I really didn't have enough time to like invest into it, and in the end of the day, I didn't need to do it anyway because I found a nice smooth tune that worked. Remember, just because you can throw as much power at your car as possible and it'll take it, doesn't mean that it's gonna give you the best ET. Smooth is the name of the game. So if your tires aren't balanced, if you've got your body rubbing against things, everything counts when you're doing 70 plus, 80, 90 miles per hour. So you can guarantee people like Dustin, Frank, uh, Dibs, their cars are not doing things like this. Smashy, their cars are just perfect. They looked at them constantly. So if your car is, if you see tire rub going on inside your bodies and you haven't made anything to adjust that, you probably better not be messing around with the, the custom P curve. But anyway, we're at zero down here. We're at 100. In that San Juan where we have the point, of course, your point goes along this line zero to 100 so if you do a point at five it's going to start here if you do a point it's going to start farther up here so basically it's going to shift everything over it's going to hit harder and you're going to get to 100 even faster based on whether or not you're using a 95 or a 96 ramp so if you do a 96 ramp it's going to get to 100 0.2 seconds slower than it would if you were using a minus 95 ramp. But again, that is if your car can take it. Hopefully it will, and you can just put in the moon tune and go for it. But if not, start building off that 96. So, so far we've covered gearing, the San Juan, and basic starting. So negative 96 ramp, just start with like a point of like 10, just go from there, no custom curve or nothing else and go for it. But if you think you're a bad boy and that your car is gonna take it, so start building up this custom curve and you know jack that thing up. Maybe you wanna do your first point at like 25, then like your second point to like 30, and then maybe your third point to like 33, and then you wanna kinda level it out a little bit. So you wanna go to like maybe 35-ish, 36-ish, and then maybe one more that's a little bit higher and then start ramping up from there. So it's just something you gotta play with. And again, based on how long it takes you to get to half track, if you've got bumps to go through or anything else like that, that's where you're gonna kinda put in those dips and delays where it's not like launching constantly because we do not need this linear. That's the point of the actual curve. It's not getting to this point faster. It's smoothing things out and making, giving your car a chance to just grab a hold as hard as it can. So that way when it hits 100%, it's all about ready for that turbo power. So let's now jump into the ESC and we will talk about some of the ESC settings. All right, so now it is time to look at the R1 ESC settings and this is where things can get complicated so you want to keep in mind everything that we have already talked about and we will reference that many times so let's go ahead and dive in here and we're already connected to the car right next door to us here on the bench so what we're going to do of course is just go into settings and I'll just give you guys the basic general stuff. I don't think there's any secrets here to what anybody is running. We're running a LiPo. We have cut off voltage disabled. Still running six volts on the back, even though sometimes I would like my lights to be a little bit brighter to run 7.4, but I just leave it at six. Nothing special here at all. So let's start with the meat and potatoes here with throttle. So the first thing we have here 
is the power curve. Now, when this thing comes standard out of the box, what's gonna happen is you've got multiple different curves that go from zero all the way up through 10. And if you kind of see what actually happens here is that at zero, you got a little bit of bend here. So at half throttle, you're down here. You're actually at about 42% at half throttle. And as we go over to about number five here, it's going to actually hit that 50% market at that 50% mark at 50% throttle, and it can keep on bending that curve up. So this curve is pretty much up to you. You can set it where you want to. I like to keep it at a neutral position, so like four or five, and that's pretty much like dead in the middle. Again, just trying to make this tune as simple as possible and give you more things to worry about. So if you put this in a linear fashion in the ESC, then you can do all of the P curve stuff that we talked about here in the M17. Or you can not do the P curve in the M17, and you can actually go in here and start adding dots and moving this all around and increase and make how it goes from zero to 100% throttle however you want it to do it. So this is the way that I'm doing it right now. Some people are doing a combination of both. They're doing a custom P curve. They've got a custom curve up here where they might actually take this first point and move it up. So they're basically eliminating completely the first five, 10, 15% of the ESC throttle pull. So when you immediately pull your trigger, if you pull it to 1%, it'll actually automatically jump up to wherever you have this first dot at. So if you watch the Desert Hobbies video and you hear Mark Vine talking about the dot and the dots and everything else like that, this is what he is talking about right here. And I've tried his tune. I had really good success using the cutoff dot method or however you want to call it uh, when I was running the R1 uh, three turn motor. And basically what I would do is move this dot up to 20%. I would add a couple more dots and then that way I would chop off the first 20% on here. And then I would use the point function on the San Juan M17 to move it over. So instantly pull the trigger. It's going to go up and over to whatever your point is, and then it's gonna ramp up the rest of it, however you have it set up, either on a curve here or a curve in the radio. Again, a lot of different ways to do this kind of stuff, but I think this method right here is a good starting point because there's just so much more stuff to deal and do, deal with, you know, if you want to do it. So try to keep it as simple as possible. Get yourself a freaking awesome, super fast, you know, two flat, one nine, whatever bass tune, and then start playing from there. So this hopefully, if this car will do that, then I'm pretty sure that any car that you guys have out there that is a good custom built chassis with good tires and everything else that you should be able to get there. So that is your whole actual curve thing when it comes to the R1 ESC. Now acceleration, everybody pretty much just, I think standard leaves that at 10. You don't really need to do anything with that at all. Start power is going to be one of those other things that's kind of confusing. Now, start power is its own power itself. If you jack this thing up to 100% and you pull all the rest of this stuff down to zero, your car will still just like take off like a rocket ship. So you really got to be careful managing the start power. So I think a lot of people are running somewhere between like 15 and maybe like 40. I mean, you could, it just is, again, it's going to depend on how, what you're doing in the radio combination with all this other stuff that we've talked about already gearing what your th your car will take the track conditions during that first you know half track that first 0.8 to like 1.0 seconds of the run to get you going to the turbo position so put it in a conservative number you see mine's at 25 and you see what i ran so put it at 25 and it, again it's one of those things that you can just start playing with there's not an actual set number or set way to do this stuff unfortunately but i'm just trying to explain to you what you can actually do and how much power you have inside all of this so 
not doing anything else. You can see everything is at zero. Uh, brakes, brakes are a little tricky. I like to touch on those a little bit because the R1 braking is super powerful. So these brake settings have worked out very, very well for me. Um, you know, definitely drag brake is fine. It's not going to hurt the ESC. You know, it's it's just fine. Now the one thing I do have is I have my dual rate on my brakes in the sand while it turned way down to like 35 percent you can maybe even go lower if you want to but if you do not ju adjust this max brake amount at all like if you leave it up where it, it normally is at 100 like you are going to spin out when you tap your brakes it's going to be like super insane so make sure you adjust that and give yourself plenty of run out room because you are going to be going faster than you ever have before just let off the trigger let that baby just cruise on out if you got enough room don't worry about pumping those brakes so let's look at like motor frequency i haven't really played around with like motor frequency a whole lot um i've adjusted the brake i think it it comes at one default i can't remember um playing with like 10 now when it comes to like actual motor frequency it's basically a little bit different between manufacturers and everything else but when it comes down to it you know you're gonna the higher the motor frequency the smoother the actual motor is going to be doing because you're sending more pwm commands a time more pulses to the actual esc so 32 kilohertz you know everybody thinks that the bigger number would be better but the problem is is that the bigger number is going to make the esc work harder it's going to create more heat and everything else sometimes it could be smoother maybe not i haven't played with it a lot i'm going with the whole mark vine thing he said he puts his in the middle i believe if you go back and look at the desert hobby videos he had his at 12 i have mine at 10 and it's working just fine so go ahead and do that for yourself and i think you'll be just fine right there smack dab in the middle so now let's get into the fun stuff let's talk about the boost and turbo setting and this is where things can get super crazy so you can see the amount of timing that i've had in this last run here and all these settings so the castle motor system we know that we have say let's say 10 degrees of timing already built into the can Castle puts 45 degrees of timing in the ESC, and that's kind of like the number that everybody just kind of goes with. So if you're worried about blowing anything up, keep it below 45 degrees on the ESC. Don't include the can. It's just don't for think about it. Think 45. So whatever combination you want to do, 20 boost, 25 turbo, 25 boost, 20 turbo. No matter any way you slice this, the way that it has worked out for me is that if I put more in turbo than I do boost, I always get more mile per hour. But if I put more in boost than I do in turbo, I always get a better ET. Now it really depends on other other factors. Like there again, we have the, the theme of this video there is so many factors that you can do to this, but don't be afraid that once you get your car super dialed in and you've done everything that we've talked about before, go ahead and crank these things up. I know people that are running 40 boost and 25 turbo, people that are running 30, 35. You can see I had a 30, 33 in here. I actually believe this is one that that night that i mean i've ran 30 boost i've ran 35 boost and the car has taken it before but for some reason that night whether it was the way that you know same surface but it was just the way that it caught or i prepped the tires or something like that that the car diffed out and i blew one of my voodoo silvers so this did not work very well for me but i know that i've done more in the past so timing is safe no matter what but if you just want to go out and start doing something you know start with the basics going again with mark vine says the auto throttle feature built into here where it's going to basically just apply timing automatically for you during the boost stage is it works almost flawlessly now i have been playing with the actual boost by rpm uh jfab gave me some numbers to try again his numbers just didn't work out for me because i had to put in more work just like you do 
Hopefully you race at the same place every time and you just kind of get a grasp for what your car does and it's capable of because you do boost by RPM, kind of like the old school with Tekken thing. So you're basically saying, and you got to look at your data logs here because your boost timing when you do it by RPM, we'll go ahead and click on it here so you can see it, is that we're saying that we're gonna hit 100% throttle at 30,000 RPMs. So all of this timing over here, 30 degrees, is gonna come in linearly between 1,000 and 30,000 RPMs. So whether that's half track, before half track, or whatever, you need to know where this kind of stuff is happening. So again, data logging, do some runs and see what's going on. So if you wanna calculate all this stuff out, you'll take this, you'll factor it into what kind of a ramp you're using, what kind of curve that you're using, everything else that we've already talked about and that's how you can do this and figure it out. There's not gonna be a set number and you're not gonna to wanna to take this and put it all the way to like the maximum of 60,000 because then you're never going to hit your actual turbo because I believe that this boost is basically only going to work in, in this RPM range. So I'm not 100% sure on this, but I don't know why you would ever want to do it because you want all of your boost timing in before your turbo timing starts. So don't try to stretch this out unless you don't want to run any turbo. Then you could basically do like a 1,000 to like 60,000 and put like 40 degrees in here and just try it that way. So that's actually... Uh, it's actually a good idea. It's something I haven't tried yet. So I'm gonna gonna try that next time and see how that actually works. So, but I don't really use the whole RPM by RPM thing right now. I haven't had to use it again. It's super aggressive uh, compared to what I had going on. So I like the auto throttle. The auto throttle takes all that information out of there. It's not going to apply timing when you're spinning. At least it's not supposed to. And it literally is just changing a couple numbers. So we're just going to focus on like boost for right now. So boost is applied from zero to 100% throttle. So however you have your remote your throttle curve, your start power, all that stuff set up, this is gonna amplify that based on however you, how much you put inside there. So maybe start off with something simple. I recommend starting at zero and zero. Again, with the gearing, figure that stuff out. See what your car will, will do without any timing. Look at your temperatures, all that kind of stuff. Get a good baseline. Figure out your gearing, get that like two one, two second run on that car, and then you can start playing with the stuff. And you're gonna see just how much little or how much that you're actually going to need to put into here. So once you're done with that, go ahead and just start cranking it up a little bit. Again, it's all up to you, man. I no matter either way that I've done this. Again, more in boost is gonna get you a better ET. More in turbo is gonna get you more mile per hour. When you get that perfect storm of the combination of both, that's when you light it up and you run a 173. When I ran my 173, I was running 30 boost and I was running 35 turbo. So go figure. But again, that's how you do all that right there. So the other thing that we have in here, of course, is turbo delay and turbo slope. Now turbo delay and turbo plus slope are really gonna come into the factor as far as like what your car is doing when it hits 100%. So if you look at your data log and you see all kinds of jagged stuff going on, during that zero to 100% throttle stage, you know, where it was going up like that, then you need to figure out what's going on with your car, or you need to like slow your ramp down, or you need to do something in the radio or in that actual power curve or startup power to get your car locked in. Because if your car is not locked in and going straight and making good power at 100%, then you're gonna have big problems when you start adding in more timing. You are just gonna break loose, you're gonna crash your stuff, and we do not want that to happen to you at all. So once you are super confident that you're making these awesome pulls from zero to 100%, you got your radio dialed in, you got your boost timing in there where you like it, then you're gonna start adding in that turbo timing. And then that's when we're gonna look at what's going on. 
add the turbo timing in slowly start with no delay and see what happens to your car that way you're continuously just adding timing to it and hopefully it just pulls all the way i like to run this mostly in this fashion i do a zero on the turbo delay and then i use a one second slope so that way i might get at all 33 degrees of this if i make it before whatever the end of my run is or i might get even less it's just basically the whole point is it's pulling the entire time it's adding timing it's not trying to cram it all in there at once and everything else and it's not going to like cause anything super crazy but if we go and look at the logs and we see that like the car is starting to unsettle a little bit and we're getting some jagged areas like around 100% throttle, then we might want to add in a little bit of a delay so we can let the car settle for a little bit. We don't have to worry about battery voltage and stuff like that like we used to talk about a year ago with the, the DRK, like letting the battery rest a little bit before we hit it with more timing. We don't have to worry about that anymore. We just want to make sure that our car is going straight and it is going flat and hooked and booking. So mess with your delay a little bit. Sometimes at half track to like three quarters track, you might have some bumps that are out there in there and your car might get a little wavy and it might get a little unsettled. So you might actually need to bring this delay up like 0.2 or 0.4 seconds just so that way you're not adding any timing when that car is going through those bumps because it's just going to break loose on you. So again, more is not, you know, less can be more. That's the key. Less can be more. So that's one thing to think about there. So the other thing to think about is how aggressive you want to put this in. Like some people will be like, I want all the timing coming in and I want it coming in as fast as possible. So I'm going to turn this thing down to like 0.3 seconds. So I'm going to dump 33 degrees of turbo in 0.3 seconds. And this thing's just going to be on a rail. Probably isn't going to work out that well for you. Again, use the tools that you have. Look at the actual data logs. If everything leading up to this is going good and you're making good clean runs, then you can either start adding more turbo timing at the end of the run, or you can bring that slider down and you can try to cram all of it in in a more reasonable time, like maybe 0 0.7, 0 0.8, something like that. You know, whatever you want to do. So it's kind of up to you. I like leaving mine at one and just adding more up here. And if it all gets in, it all gets in. If not, it is all good either way because I literally just ripped off like a 18519 at at least 76 to like 78 miles per hour. I know that people are like, oh, well, everybody else is going 15s at 90 and 95 and stuff like that. We'll get there, guys. Everybody's going to get there. We never thought that we would see times like this now. All of us last year in my group were running two twos, two threes. We had a couple two ones. Now we are all consistently breaking that two second, that 1.9 second barrier, breaking the 80 mile per hour barrier. And it just comes down to us just having fun, practicing, learning all this stuff and everything else. So the last thing is gonna be that little last button here, which is uh, turbo minus slope. And all this is is basically how fast all that turbo timing is gonna come out when you let off the trigger. So I just kind of have mine at like 0.6. Um, so all the turbo is gonna come out of it at 0.6. It's more, I really don't understand why it's there. I've read through some of the, the posts from Steve and everything else and dibs, I think did some, but, uh, you know, just find a number that you're comfortable with. Maybe your shutdown area, like ours is super long. It's like at least two to three times more the length of the, of the actual track. Cause we're in like a retail parking lot. So I've got plenty of time to just let off the trigger and let the thing just run out before I apply any kind of brake or anything at all. So the turbo's coming out, the drag brakes kicked in. It's just slowing itself down. I don't have to do anything crazy. 
and it's good. Now, the other thing that this can be advantageous for is if you're going half track and your turbo kicks in and then you have to let off and hit your brakes. So you don't want all that coming out like super fast. So you definitely want to like gradually bring that out so you can get the car under control. So I wouldn't put that too low. I would try to keep that up a little bit just so that way you are being as safe as possible. All right, so I've watched this back a couple times, and I really don't think there is anything else that I can add to it to let you know. I mean, I, the biggest thing is like, you know, I've been running on Voodoo's. The Voodoo Silvers were definitely have been super fast. I've got the actual real soft Voodoo foams in there as well. I just got my medium soft foams. You know, the Voodoo tires, if you can get some, they were it, the Silvers going from reds to Silvers, even though the reds are softer. You know, now that it's hot, it seems like those silvers work a lot better here in Ohio. I mean, that was an extra three or four mile per hour just making a tire switch. So getting the car uh, balanced and set up properly, playing with your springs, soften up your rear end if you need to. And, you know, seeing how things are going, you might have to start moving more weight forward. You see the whole theme with a lot of these new chassis are doing things like forward mounted servos and everything else like that. And then being able to like add brass inserts and stuff throughout the day or the night as the traction increases, you're getting more forward bite and all that kind of stuff. So that way you can start adding more weight and just putting the power down, man. So there's so many different ways that you guys can do with this. Let me know how this does for you and you know what your car is doing. I hope that this helps some of you guys and it just kind of clarifies everything and shows you the power of it. The Castle Motor for 100 bucks is a great investment. The R1 Digital 3 ESC is the king of the ESCs right now. It's the king of the streets. It's actually the queen of the streets and the queen of Maumee, Ohio, of the SummerSlam and everything else right now. So get yourself some R1 action going on for sure. Get that Castle Motor. If you can't get that Castle Motor, the R1 3 turn is awesome as well. Almost everything here is going to apply. The gearing will be different, and you're definitely going to be throwing a lot more timing at it for sure. But I had a lot of success with that three-turn R1 motor, so don't be afraid to throw one of those in there. Again, they're really cheap. If you want to go the, the advanced route with like a Nick Bell or a Rockwell system, you can do something like that as well. But, you know, again, don't don't hesitate to, like, pick one of those things up as well. You'll be super happy. So that's it, guys. I mean, I don't know what else I can say, but good luck. Go faster, and we'll talk to you guys later. Peace.